You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming out and listening to The Real Short Box. My name is Donald. My name is Dr. Kevin. And I'm the fool killing Jared. I pity the fools that I kill. Ah, you know what, Jared? That's uh, that's a good thing actually for today, uh, because uh, murder is on the uh, the top of the subject here as we are talking about truly horrific comic book characters. Yeah, it's going to get uh, disturbing. Um, we wanted to. We were first going to, you know, a little behind the scenes. Uh, you know, uh, behind the scenes little uh, uh, intel here. We were originally going to do horror icons, and then we were kind of like, you know what, we've done, like in comic book horror icons, and we were like, you know, we've done that. We've talked about the characters that we want to talk about so many times. It would just kind of be like retreading uh, old stories, so why not actually come up with characters that maybe some of you might have not even heard of uh, that truly terrified us? I mean, that are like actually scary creatures, people in comic books. Yeah, so really frightening stuff. I think uh, I think we're going to have a really fun time with this one. And hopefully you guys do too out there in podcast land listening to us discuss this. So uh, we're going to dive right in, get started here. Um, Kevin, you uh, were just talking about, before we got started, you were talking about uh, this, this very educated man. I believe he went to college and uh, got a degree. Uh, and uh, he goes by the name of? Uh, Professor Pig. <laughs> Professor Pig, yes. Terrifying. Now, that sounds like a character from Clue, if I'm correct. But uh, <laughs> A little bit. It's, uh, a little bit. Professor and it's like, it's like his real name is Laszlo Valentine. Laszlo? Yeah, Laszlo Valentine. You know they really went for the creepy name factor on that. They're like, what's a weird, eccentric, creepy name? <laughs> Laszlo Valentine. <laughs> Now, that happens to be uh, Kevin's actually uh, was originally supposed to be named that. That was going to be his first. <laughs> name. Hey, I would I would have accepted it. I would have been cool with that. Oh, however, we know. however, I wouldn't be cool with this guy's origin. This poor guy, a scientist who suffers from schizophrenia, and he breaks down and becomes a supervillain. He wears a pig mask, which looks really, really disturbing. If you saw this, like at, at the middle of the night, waking up, you scream your life out. You mean scream uh -huh. your lungs out. I mean, this dude is creepy looking. And I, I believe this character may have influenced the human centipede movies. Who knows? Because of some of the things that he does when he kidnaps people and does surgeries and things to permanently change them and merge things together. Doesn't he like give him pig faces too? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's truly creepy. And that he first premiered in what issue of uh of Batman? Are you ready for this? Batman yeah. issue six. Six six. Oh shit. Let me guess, Grant Morrison. You got it. And <laughs> and Andy Co uh, Andy Kubert. Uh, now, uh, I was first introduced to this character. Uh I, I, I had seen little clips of him and I was like, who the hell is that guy? Because he looked like out of a video game, like one of those like a horror video game. And he's like that creepy. But uh I was playing Arkham Knight, uh the video game, and he was a side quest and and it was actually pretty goddamn terrifying like you go to some warehouse and he's there like chopping up people or something or doing some kind of stuff and you have to bring him in and he's a kook like he's a he's a freaky kook. if you if you you know you will hopefully have a picture of him but he's he, he's almost like texas chainsaw massacre with like a piggy face yeah that's right? what to describe and he's into doing human animal hybrids you know uh mind controlled people mind controlled known as dolatrons dolatrons very interesting and scary at the same time Dolatrons or Dolomites? Dolomites um, would be cool. Dolomites would be cool. Dolatrons are scary. Yeah, very scary. Ah, nice, nice. Um, so Professor Pig, uh, he's not a nice guy. He's somebody that you would want to shut down relatively fast, uh, particularly if you were in the Batman world, uh, because once he gains steam, uh, it, it can be truly terrifying. Uh, I don't think that I would want to cross paths with Professor Pig. You, you have to imagine these characters being brought forth into the real world. Oh, I was just about to say that. And how that would affect you. Like, that's terrifying if you think yeah. about it. Just terrifying 
that someone wants to alter the way you look and like the way you function and add pieces and take away stuff and they just want to experiment with you well with your be, body to be honest with you apparently this is real if you go like i've, I've heard about if you look at those some of those youtube like those deep web pages or dark web pages. Mm -hmm. Apparently there are people who do things like this. They'll kidnap people, switch body parts with animal parts or other parts. They can do all kinds of crazy experimentation on them, which is really frightening. Jesus. Oh, yes. Now, now I'm already scared and we're only on our first one. Well, if I were you, sir, <laughs> lock your doors, protect your kids, get your shotgun ready, and let's go I to the next them. one. Justin, uh, <laughs> Justin uh, Young, I believe. Or just oh yeah, I remember him. Yeah, Justin Long, I think the actor is it Long? Oh, the Walrus movie, Tusk. Yeah, Tusk, Tusk. Yeah. Oh, Apparently, right. Kevin Smith uh, did that to him, and we haven't seen him act since. So <laughs> that's right. That's right. You He's just gone. don't know, guys. You just don't know. That sucks. Can't trust anybody. Uh, Jared, do you? Uh, you you probably have somebody in mind when we were uh, talking earlier. I think you mentioned somebody. Yeah, I got somebody. Uh, let's do. Let's do Mr. Hyde. And now Mr. Hyde has many incantations. Uh, I always want to say incantations, like I'm fucking casting a spell. Incarnations. <laughs> right. Um, I breathe too much Doctor Strange. Uh, there's the Marvel version, which I think is cool, but he's not really truly terrifying. He's just, you know, he's kind of just the kind of strong psychopath. Uh, but the one I'm talking about is from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Now, this the idea of Jekyll and Hyde always kind of creeped me out because it's just the fact that you're with some like kind of like weird weaselly little nerd guy and then all of a sudden like he gets pissed off and drinks a potion and like becomes some raging beast who is uncontrollable which as I was describing it is the Incredible Hulk right I mean the Incredible mm -hmm. Hulk is Jekyll and Hyde like completely mm -hmm. um, but the Hyde in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen what makes him so terrifying is he's first off like if you haven't read the story, it's pretty much Alan Moore taking like all these um, historical uh, characters or, or uh, I should say uh, literary characters and making them a team. Like he's got Mina Murray from Dracula. He's got Alan Quartermain um, and uh, the Invisible Man and uh, Jekyll and Hyde or, uh, or Dr. Jekyll who becomes Mr. Hyde. And so in the comic, when they recruit him, his you first meet him, he's, uh, they're trying to recruit him, obviously, because for his strength and all that, but they do know he's unpredictable. So he picks up Mina Murray thinking she's posing as a prostitute, and he takes her back to his apartment where he transforms into Hyde, and he goes to kill her. So that's how you're introduced to him. So when I was reading the story, I was like, why do they want this psychopath on the team? Like, he's crazy. But they kind of find a way to appeal to him and his, his kind of duality. Hmm. Um, but what truly made him terrifying in the story was one, you never knew once he became Hyde, he, he never, you never knew if they could control him or not. And it wasn't like, and this is Alan Moore writing it with, you know, uh, on, on an independent label. So he, he could do whatever he wants. So it's not like the Hulk where you're going to make, somebody's going to calm him down and at the worst, he's going to wreck some stuff. It was like, if Hyde went crazy, he might just rip your face off. Mm. And pretty much the penultimate, like, uh, event that happened was in uh, I think it was volume one of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen uh, the the team uh, is double crossed by the Invisible Man and the Invisible Man uh, I, I think they allude that he, uh, he he might even have sexually assaulted uh, Mina Murray and he beats her up and like he, he oh, double crosses no. them yeah Aww. so Hyde by this point in the story Hyde kind of has this affectionate kind of Beauty and the Beast thing for Mina and he wants to protect her uh -huh. so he hunts on his own, hunts down the invisible man. Like he's still got his smarts of Dr. Jekyll. So he actually uses like infrared like vision to find, uh, to find the invisible man. And this is where it gets sadistic. He takes him into this room where he like corners him and he just beats the shit out of him. And then he rapes him to death. Oh my God. Yeah. Lord. So, yeah. He rapes him to death and like, Oh God, it was, just, I remember reading that going like, Oh fuck. Like you wanted to see the invisible man get his, but then you're like, holy shit, this is going to another fucking level. And and that was pretty much Mr. Hyde for you in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Just a truly unpredictable, terrifying character who at times was heroic, but then mostly was just barbaric and insane. How am I going to sleep tonight just thinking about that? I know. These are only <laughs> two two out of our ten. This is insane. Kevin, if you, uh, if you misbehave, uh, Mr. Hyde's going <laughs> to sneak into your room and rape you to death. <laughs> Good old rape to death. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. that's that's why I have my sword next to my bed, just in case. God, I, I know we did a we did a live podcast uh, not too long ago about Dark Disney, and mm-hmm. uh, I think this is outdoing that. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. this, yeah. This is this is definitely more extreme. Hey, tis the season, All Hallows Eve. It's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I have one here that I wanted to bring up. I, I think this is going to fit in quite nicely, actually. Um, a while back ago, not too terribly long. Uh, poor poor like, choice of words, Donald. Fit in nicely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some, sometimes things are, uh, you know, a little tight. Try to fit it. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to move go, on. Go on. Go on. I'm sorry. So the Sinestro Corps, um, I don't know. For those that don't know, there was the Green Lantern Corps, which is Hal Jordan. He's part of the Justice League. And Sinestro used to be like Hal Jordan before there was Hal Jordan. But Sinestro went a little dark, and he thought that the way to rule people was not through living by example, but it was through fear. So he created his own uh, team of lanterns called the Yellow, and they ruled by fear. That's how they powered their ring. And the Green Lanterns was willpower, and the Yellow Lanterns was fear. So he started to um, recruit people, and one of these characters that he recruited was a character named Crib. Crib is a frightful hunchback alien. Um, He's got a particularly nasty uh, modus operandi. Uh, It's actually she. She attacks Green uh, Lanterns who have newborn children. Yes. So she instills fear into their hearts by threatening the life of their child Mm. and then strikes. After murdering both parents, she then takes the child and puts it in her sack-like back. Oh my goodness, that's scary. So the back is kind of made out of, to to give you an idea, she kind of looks like um, the ring, the the character that comes out of the television, but with a very sinister-looking large long gaunt face with smile and teeth and very slanty kind of narrow eyes and nostrils big long claw hands and and feet and her back is made out of bone where the children then are stuck inside of and are screaming and holding on to this Mm -hmm. bone trying to get out and she carries them along with her as part of her power because as she's instilling fear in them, she's generating more power for herself. Wow. So it's truly a terrifying thing. She literally terrifies these children to basically to death, mm-hmm. kills their parents in front of them, and kidnaps them and, and puts them in her bone-like back. Imagine that. Now, was her first appearance as a, a part of the Sinestro Corps? Because that's where I first saw her. Yeah. Yeah, okay. she first appeared in a in a Sinestro Corps title um, story. And yeah, I remember reading that and just being like, "Look, you know, he went all like he had Superboy Prime, he had the Anti Monitor." I was like, "Okay, this is like nuts." And then I was like, "Oh, and you even have to throw in like some fucking super super like disgusting creature." It's Crib too. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Not not somebody you would want to run across, particularly if you were married and had kids. No. Which I am, so I don't want to hang out with Crib. Yeah, Kevin and I would be okay, but Jared, you'd have to get the hell out of there fast. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. All right. Let's so, get How to take care of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Help me, How. Help How. How Jordan, help me. All right, Kevin, what do you got? Well, the next one I have, I don't think it really has much plot to it. To be honest with you, it's basically an extreme version of The Walking Dead called The Crossed. Okay. And essentially what happens in this particular story is, you know, America is overrun by a bunch of homicidal homicidal maniacs who have been infected with, you know, some kind of plague that leaves a scarred cross on their face. And they just go absolutely wild. It just basically taps the most extreme evil version of the human brain and human mind where they rape, they kill they, you know, they uh, destroy, rampage. It's just, it's just every imaginable horrific crime you can think of is done in these books. I mean, this is like NC-17 X-rated material. Just and it's ruthless. By, and it's written by? Mr. Garth Ennis. Yeah, so you know, you know, you let that guy 
I go wild, it's just going to be, and I mean, with, you know, Preacher, the boys, like that guy, <laughs> he's no holds barred. Yeah. So, and Avatar right. Press, you know, the independent label, of course, you know, it, it's, it's, it's all free reign, do whatever you want. And basically Mr. Ennis has complete, and I mean, complete creative control over his story. I mean, it is out of there. I mean, the covers tell you a lot. We I would not be surprised if we see a more tamed down version of Crossed at some point. Now that the Walking Dead's wrapping up and they're, right. you know, they're trying to do some offshoots and stuff. I think Crossed, it's a perfect time for Crossed to be done and to take over, to be honest. And and I think you're going to probably see it because Ennis had Preacher done. Ennis mm-hmm. has now had the boys done. And Preacher and the boys in comic book form is much more grotesque and much more violent than what it is in the television versions. Yeah. So, so, you know, keep that in mind. So with Crossed, it's going to be even more violent. It, basically, it's the primal instincts of these characters if they want to have sex they will just rape you man woman child it doesn't matter oh yes they are infected with this virus they've got these bloody crosses across their face they are after just the most basic needs they'll kill you to eat you they'll kill you to rape you they'll they'll kill for pleasure it doesn't matter if they're bored yeah. they'll kill you and, and they're smart they'll do it nicely either and they're smart too it's not like like regular zombies where you know you can probably hide somewhere Oh, these these cats, you know, their brains are still functioning in that in a sense that they'll track you down. They'll they'll be looking for you. A truly frightening zombie. Yep. One that can think outside the box. Yep. I gotta read this now, but I also don't want to read it because I'm scared. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, you said it was even too scary for you. You started to read it and then you just you had to get rid of it because you were like, This is too much for me. Yeah, it's too much for me. Actually, you sold most of it. I may have one or two left somewhere in my collection, but yeah, most of them I just got rid of. I was like, man, this is just too much, even for me. It's, yeah. it's just it's because it's, it's, really there's not much plot to be honest with you it's just this mayhem it's just it's just mayhem 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 you know whatever right. survivors are left they're just trying to do everything they can to survive and if someone gets caught you know god help them it's over yeah. and Jarrett, you have another one yeah this one now this character there's not much to this character because in comic form this character didn't uh do much uh, the character's name is wallow Wallow is a demon uh, that worked with Blackheart, uh, premiered in the Ghost Rider uh, series, volume three, number 87. Now, the, there is a, a version of this character in, I think, the second Ghost Rider film. Don't, it, this is nothing to do with that. They just took the name because the character in that is like some like water demon or something. I don't know. And uh-huh. the character looks lame. Now, if you look at the character, of, the reason I even chose this character, because the first time I saw the comic that this character appeared in i was like what the fuck is that it was a ghost rider book so i was sold on that the character is like all kind of like this almost like uh maroon colored just all like goo almost like a venom carnage type thing but then with a little baby doll face in the middle like a shrunken baby doll face in the middle of their face so i was like that's pretty terrifying so and the story so this is the history it's brief uh character's name is max pressman Uh, He had murdered his wife, Maria, and attempted to kill himself and his two small children, Michael and Melinda. A police officer shot him before he could do so, but Pressman eventually returned as a ghost-like entity with only the face of Melinda's doll as his own. He was called Wallow, able to induce and feed upon human misery. Yeah, Approaching the now adult Melinda, he stirred despair within her until she stepped from a 10-story building. However, she survived the fall and Ghost Rider hurried her to a hospital while next pushed Michael off another roof. So he's still, he, he tried to kill his kids. He becomes a demon and then tries to come back and kill his kids by making them so miserable they'll kill themselves. Uh, he's, a, he's eventually defeated by Ghost Rider's pen and stare and uh, he's reduced to ashes and he goes back to Blackheart's realm. And he really was never seen much more in the comics after that. And I'm guessing it's because he's pretty he's kind of i mean for marvel 616 universe he's kind of too much he's a little disturbing i think even for them yeah they were like you need to dial it back a bit and he's like okay i'll just kill him off yeah exactly but the fact that like this guy is kills his wife it's it's his origin starts off with a murder suicide and then he and then he literally comes back as a demon so he can kill his kids is just fucking demented (laughs) With Good this Lord. little baby doll face. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Wow. That's, I don't have anything quite like that, um, but <laughs> I have one that's pretty disturbing nonetheless. Uh, 
we'll go with Anton Arcane slash The Rot. Oh, yes. Now, anybody that knows anything about Swamp Thing and Swamp Thing comic book lore is that Anton Arcane is basically the number one nemesis of Swamp Thing. Mm-hmm. Swamp Thing is part of the green. It's a life-giving force that helps keep the planet alive. Whereas Anton is part of the rot, which is the life-taking force that uses decay as a power. Now, both of these have to be in balance in the world. And in the real world, you have to have a balance of life and death. And in that, decay. What would happen if you, you know, uh, birds that died or things like that didn't decay? You know, if maggots didn't come, if bacteria didn't come and help break things down, if animals didn't eat and digest and ingest these, you know, pieces of meat and stuff like that, you would just have dead carcasses lying everywhere. It would be a mess. The problem is, is that the rot wants to have all of that all the time. It wants the world to be an entire rotting corpse that just continues to rot and fester. It loves the grotesque and the deformed. It loves the dead. It wants you dead simply so you're part of it. And that's something that's super scary if you think about it. Because the green, which is the life force, wants you part of it because it wants you alive. It wants you to live. And if you're able to live, you're able to move forward in your life and create and generate and and do great things. If you're dead, you're not doing anything. You're just rotting. And that's what the rot wants. It wants you lifeless. So Anton... um, was a brilliant but deranged scientist who dedicated his life to discovering the secret of of immortality. He was born in the 19th century. He's still alive, guys. This is how old this dude is now. But by binding himself with the rot, he was able to finally figure out how to become immortal by being dead. So he's basically kind of like a zombie in his own way and very creepy. He's not a nice dude. Um, You know, he, he was... He was even friends uh, with Adolf Hitler, I believe, at one point. So just to make him an even worse character, (laughs) just add that in, that he also enjoys the company of Nazis. So Anton Arcane slash The Rot was my second choice here for truly terrifying characters. And Kevin, since we're running low on time, we'll move on to you quickly. All right. My uh, third one is Violator, one of Spawn's uh, villains. Wow. Okay. Yes, a powerful hellborn demon, and his purpose is basically to guide hell spawns towards fulfilling Malbolgia's des- Malbolgia's desire to cultivate evil souls on Earth for Hell's army. So, of course, you know he's there trying to manipulate Al Simmons when he became a spawn or became spawn. And of course, another version of him is earthly disguised as like the clown. And of course, for those who saw that you know mediocre spawn movie from the late '90s, was played uh-huh. by the great John Leguizamo. Right. Yeah, and he did a great job, too. He did a really great job. So the character is double terrifying, though, because when you look at him as the violator, he's this really grotesque, creepy demon. And then his, yeah, his human form is like John Wayne Gacy, pretty much. Like in a clown outfit. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Yeah, you know what? That's a great, that's a great example, Jared. You're absolutely right. Yeah, so you don't really have to go forward on that one because that says it all. Yeah. Um, Jared, you have one more? Yeah, I got one more. Uh, this character, Murmur, from The Flash. Uh, his first appearance was in Flash Iron Heights, number one. This was so out of left field for a Flash villain, and it's actually what got me uh, to start reading Flash, because I was like, this because there was like a showcase or something on this character. Uh, Murmur is a, he's uh, Dr. Michael Amar, a once respected surgeon, succumbed to madness and started a killing spree to stop the voices inside his head, as we do. Right. This spree went through Central and Keystone City and caught the eye of police officers Fred Chire and Joe Jackman. Uh, They tracked Amar down and uh, they, they, with the help of obviously Barry Allen, and part of Amar's psychosis is is the inability to stop himself from blurting out his crimes. Because of these outbursts, he's quickly convicted and sentenced to death. So he's in uh, in court and he just starts yelling like, I killed them! I killed them! And the guy (laughs) looks freaky. He's got, he kind of looks like Sideshow Bob, like he's got Sideshow Bob hair. And, except black and he's a s- super scrawny guy so to stop himself from blurting out uh, his crimes he cuts out his own tongue and sews his mouth shut so he will no longer be able to incriminate himself he wears a thin mask of his own design and he becomes known as murmur 
uh, this guy was such like kind of like Professor Pig, how he was like, you know, Batman's villains are dark, but that guy was kind of on another level dark. Murmur is so out of left field that become, and he's become one of the Flash's rogues. Um, but he's, he's just so demented and he just, all he does is carry around like a knife and he uses like, um, I think he, he, and his blood is like, he, he can't like, he can't get diseases, but he can infect people with shit. He's just a really sick dude. And the way he looks, like I said, he's got this like stitched up mask he puts over his face and his tongue. If he, if he takes his mask off, his his mouth is sewed shut. So he's like, uh, Michael Myers meets uh, Sideshow Bob. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. All right. I've got one for you here. Not too far off from that kind of creepy. Uh, it's His name is Birthday Boy. <laughs> what? Yeah, Birthday Boy. That's the, that's literally the name. It's a Batman character. Um, he was uh, created by uh, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank for Batman Earth One. Now, uh, that was, I believe it was a trade that came out. So, Birthday Boy, a.k.a. Ray Salinger, was a serial killer. Note the last name, Salinger. Mm -hmm. Was a serial killer whose first victim was a 15-year-old girl. and uh, Her name was Amanda. Uh, from then on, he kind of became obsessed with girls who were around that age, around 15 years of age. Already he creepy? Would, yeah, he would then kidnap them, tie them up, give them a birthday cake that said, Happy Birthday, Amanda. Then he would tell them to make a wish. And, and not to tell anybody. And then he would kill them. So, Jesus Christ. Yeah. He kept all his victims' bodies in the basement of Arkham House. And at some point he escaped from the Crane Institute and became employed by, at the time, Mayor Oswald Cobblepot as a hitman. And Oswald paid him in payment with little girls. Jesus Christ. Yes. Jeez, good Lord. Yes. Talk about freaky. So, yeah, not somebody you want to hang out with and definitely not somebody you want to meet at a birthday party. I'll tell you that much. Jesus. Yeah. So our last one, I think what we're going to go over quickly is um, one that I found rather interesting myself. And I know you guys have gone over it and looked at it. Um, we are talking about Demon Baby. Yes. <laughs> Lord. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, anybody want to want to mention real quick anything about the demon baby? I, I will say quickly what he looks like. He looks like a little imp, um, kind of all uh, pinkish red, uh, real nasty looking face on him. You know, a scowl, and he you know has pointy ears, and he looks like a little demon baby, uh, literally, just a little little kid, a little baby kid. Now, this was the character we're talking about from the the Daredevil comics, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so, created by Brian Michael Bendis and Alex uh, Maliv. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. He's yeah, he's like a little terrifying, uh, without being a, you know just right on the button uh, a demon baby. He looks uh, like a little freaky demon baby. Yeah, basically <laughs> the the demon baby was summoned by uh, Lawrence, who was a man who'd been cast out of the hand, and who was a practitioner of ancient ritualistic rites. Uh, but in order to give it, uh, in order to give it to uh, Jonathan Powers, the Jester, for a power boost is what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, when the Jester was defeated by Daredevil, the Demon Baby began possessing various people and inspiring them to violence. <laughs> and that means that he would then uh, could make his way back eventually to who'd summoned it. So he was trying desperately to jump from body to body. To find his way back to the guy that had summoned him, which was uh, Lawrence, the dude that was from the hand that practiced the occult, basically. So th this guy pretty much is just uh, alone. In fact, all of these characters, I would say, alone could just be their own horror films. Yeah, yeah. Demon Babe was able to possess the bodies of human beings and was able to grant them superhuman strength, endurance, and agility, as well as the ability to fire green energy from their eyes. Um, once the host body expired... Uh, because of a certain amount of stress, the demon baby then was vomited up and would immediately <laughs> scurry to go seek out a new host. So, if hey, we're in the same demon room, baby, yeah, yeah. If we're in the same room with this thing, it would be vomited out and then would run towards you and try to get inside your body. Probably any orifice would do, to be honest. Oh God. Yeah. Wow. So, not something that uh, you would want to be in the vicinity of as well. I don't know, honestly, out of all that we, these that we've discussed, I think probably Kevin and I are the safest with Crib. 
<laughs> and that's yeah. something um, truly terrifying. I, I don't know what to say about these characters except for don't get near them. And if you read about them, if you want to read the comic books that they were involved in, please feel free to, to do that. I mean, uh, this was a Daredevil arc by, by Bendis for Demon Baby. So it wasn't that long ago, within the last 10 years, that this story was written. I think it was um, Daredevil number 73, actually, which was his first appearance. So, yeah. And he appeared, I think, in only like five or six issues. So it wasn't there for a long time. But, boy, it sticks with you when you read something like that. All of these. Yeah, I, I hope we truly creeped you out, some of you, and or, or got you to go, wow, I've never heard of that character before. And now right. I, I, I'm going to read them and then cry myself to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> in the fetal position. But uh, with that, I think we're going to leave you haunted and, uh, you know, maybe disturbed. very, yeah, maybe very disturbed. And uh, please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. We're on the Rumble Spoon Productions page on there. Um, we can always use more subscribers. We appreciate that. Um, we do a live podcast usually every Monday. Uh, so feel free to check us out on there on YouTube as well. We answer all your questions. We, we, we communicate back and forth with you, and we usually have a pretty awesome topic. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We have a good time with everybody that, that gets involved in chats and stuff on there. That's right. Uh, Mondays at 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. Uh-huh. Find us on Instagram. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Twitter. We have some Listen great to us on anywhere you can find a podcast. You can find us, I'm sure. Spreaker, uh, Blueberry, uh, iHeartRadio. Uh, we are everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff. Yeah, if, if you throw a dart at a podcast app, we're probably on it. So with that, again, my name is Donald. My name is Dr. Kevin. My name is Jared. And if you do make it out in the outside world, put a mask on, open the door to a beautiful shop, because we might see you at that shop. We might see you at the this, comic shop. Yes. Yes. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Have a good night. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening.